Hey guys, my name is Pansy and welcome to my Striker PvE Rotation Guide. In this video, I'm covering a lot more than just that. We're going to talk about why Striker is so strong, why you should play it. We're going to cover the add-ons, the basic skill build, how many skill points you need to play this rotation, the rotation itself, and then finally we're going to see it in action. But before we begin, almost 80% of you guys watching my videos are not subscribed, so please do hit that subscribe button, like, comment, and hit the bell icon as well so you get notifications when I go live or drop a new video. Check me out at twitch.tv slash I'm Pansy. I stream three days a week right now, and feel free to drop by. And finally, BDO is an action combat game, so your FPS and your latency play a big factor. That's why I use exit lag to reduce my ping from 120 all the way down to 68 to 70 it's stable and it works great for me if you guys want to try it out the link is in the description down below there's a free three-day trial and if you like it use the code pansy for 20 percent off all right now for the good stuff what makes succession striker so strong well succession striker makes up for everything that awakening lacked awakening was great in lower end grind spots but once you get to the higher end spots the clones are at a disadvantage, the damage spread is not direct enough, and he just falls off compared to the other classes. Succession, however, makes up for it in many ways. The tankiness, the speed, the mobility, and the damage is instant and the AoE spreads are still decent. It is just a phenomenal class when you get to the end game spots like Sakrya, Star's End, and the places where Striker is doing a full rotation against the mobs. When you compare it to some of the other classes, his rotation is easier, he's more mobile, and he can just dish out the damage a lot quicker. It's easy to pull mobs with him and get around terrain. He's just a good all-round class for PvE. It's very easy to see why Succession Striker is so powerful when you compare the trash loot per hour players are pulling at high-end grind spots compared to other classes. Some classes can match Striker, but very few of them are as easy to play as Striker. Now, there is a high skill ceiling to being a great striker, but to get started off with the main damage rotation is pretty easy. We're going to go over the add-ons, which are really important, because when they changed the add-on system, striker actually got buffed by it, because there's three different stages of an add-on. There's the tier 1, 2, and 3, where each one gives a different amount of stats. Striker got lucky and got a tier 3 add-on on Wolfsfang, which is absolutely insane because you can spam that skill and you can have that buff up at 100% of the time. So let's go check out the add-ons and then we'll move on to the actual skill build, the damage rotations, etc. Here are my add-ons for Succession Striker. You can copy these as it is, but I definitely recommend you listen to my explanation on why I chose them and which ones you can switch out because two of them aren't even necessary. I kept them on for personal preference. So starting off from the top, we have Adamantine. For Adamantine, I have 4% accuracy and 7% attack speed. You can switch out the accuracy for something else if you don't need the accuracy to hit the mobs where you're grinding, but I kept it on for PvP sake. Next I have Rage Hammer. Here we have 4% accuracy and we have a debuff for minus 7% accuracy. So the reason why I have this is because you'll see later on how we cancel into Rage Hammer and I pull with Rage Hammer and I use it as a gap closer in PvP so I actually wanted to keep accuracy there because I won't always start off with Adamantine or another skill. This is usually the first way I hit an enemy player. Next is definitely the most important of the add-ons, that's Wolfsfang. You definitely want to have 30 extra monster damage on it along with 30% crit but the crit isn't necessary you can switch it out for something else like attack speed or dp debuff but that's up to you moving forward we have roaring tiger i like putting back attack damage and crit hit damage on this because there are times i start off the entire rotation with roaring tiger and there are other times i use it right after i move behind a target and get a back attack in so it really helps out to have that back attack damage and crit hit is really good because a lot of our skills are always critting because of our high innate crit rate and these are good choices to have but you can switch it up as well next is crimson fang this one is the beginning of your main damage output so you definitely want to have attack speed on it and most importantly is going to be the minus 15 dp this is really good for it because it stacks with the uh, one from death strike which is also uh, minus 20 and that is an insane amount of dp shred you must have two stacking dp debuff to get the full 
Power of Striker. And finally, we have Rampaging Predator. This is just for PvP, and I put 15 DP and movement speed for being able to catch players and just be a little bit more tanky. Absolutely not necessary for PvE. You can change it out however you want. But remember, the most important thing with these add-ons is one, you have Wolf's Fang and you're utilizing the tier three add-on there. And for the rest of them, as you go through your damage rotation, as you get to the main damage output, all the important add-ons are proc. That is accuracy, attack speed, monster AP, crit hit rate, and if you can, crit hit damage. All right, guys, so we're gonna start off with the skill build for Succession Striker here. Let's first select Succession to unlock the prime skills. Now the first set of skills you see here are pretty useless to us, we rarely ever use them. You can use a triple flying kick to uh, just buff yourself, but absolutely not important here. First thing you want to do is level up Adamantine. Let's get prime to as high as you can. All the follow-up skills in this tree are really important. So you'll have Ankle Hook all the way to Absolute, Marshall Deva all the way to Absolute, and Mass Destruction is not a part of this tree technically, but it is an important skill, so level that up. Next up, Hidden Claw. You don't use Hidden Claw itself that often, but the flow Savage Fang is really good. It comes after Martial Deva as well as Hidden Claw, so it's something that is a part of the Adamantine rotation. So level that up, and you can level this up. Once you have enough skill points, it's not the most important thing, but it is a good bit of damage for this, right? So let's level it up. Next is the Crimson Fang tree. This is a really important tree as well. Crimson Fang has a skill called Death Strike, which is a flow, which de which debuffs the target by 20 DP, right? So this is really important. So you get that, you get all of the follow-up skills. Oh, not the absolute. You want the prime Crimson Fang. There we go. Get all the flows. All the flows connected to Crimson Fang and you're good to go. So these are important, these are part of the main damage rotation, so these do get priority. Now from Knee Hammer, there's a bit of a thing with this. So Knee Hammer itself is not used for damage, so you don't have to level it up high, but you do want the prime Knee Hammer, and I'll show you why. Let's scroll down to Rage Hammer here. Rage Hammer obviously will take the prime variant unless you need the bound effect here uh, for PvP, because the prime Rage Hammer, while it does more damage, bound is only for PvE. So. Anyway, back to Knee Hammer, it has a flow with Rage Hammer. So this is Knee Hammer and this is Rage Hammer. Now, if you have Prime Knee Hammer, you should be able to chain it together. Right now, I don't have Prime, so that's how it looks. So if you take even just one point of Prime Knee Hammer here, it changes the flow to like this. So it adds a leap to that Rage Hammer, and it's really nice for mobility, it's really nice for pulling mobs, and it's something that you'll use all the time. So, for that reason, you want to have at least one point into Knee Hammer, otherwise we really don't use that skill. So, following up with Knee Hammer, there is a flow called Rock Smash. Now, Rock Smash itself, damage isn't that great, but it is a super armor, and it does have bounce, so it's not a bad skill to have. It's not important for your main damage rotation, so I'm not going to include it here. So we'll just put that right there. Tornado Kick, I locked it because I don't like using it during my PV rotations. Stalking Wolf is super important. So how Stalking Wolf works is it's one of your really good mobility skills. Let's say that's the target over there, right? He's standing right there. So if you use Prime Knee Hammer and Stalking Wolf right after, which is forward F or WF, it's a teleport. So let's say this is distance, right? So it teleports me to the target. And it actually has a really nice range, so if the target is over there... So that's a pretty far teleport, and some strikers don't know about this, but it's something you'll use while grinding all the time to get from pack to pack. So that is a very important skill, but in PvP, be very careful, it's not protected. Twisted Collision is not really a big deal for PvE, so I'm not going to include that. Somersault is not the most important skill because while it does have a DP debuff, uh, the one from Death Strike is a lot better. It's uh, 5 DP more debuffed. So, Somersault is also useful for 
a cancel with Wolfsfang. So it's not important, but I will show you afterwards, after we do the most important skill rotation here, or the important skills build, I'll show you how to use Somersault as well. But for now, we'll leave it out. Sweeping Kick, useless, I locked it. Roaring Tiger is a really good skill. We wanna level it up to max. Wolfsfang is your bread and butter now since the add-on chain, so you wanna level up that. And Rage Hammer, you wanna take the Prime Variant. And of course, all the succession skills. You want Flash Step to max, Silent Step, most likely to max, and uh, Evasion locked. Crouching Wolf, Prey Hunt, very important. Uh, grab, of course you want that. Let's level that up. It's not the most vital thing for grinding, so you can actually just leave that out for this for this portion of the video. So these are obviously um, what you want to level up as soon as you can. Uh, for Prime Discharge, you want to get this as soon as possible. This is, once again, not the most essential thing. But anyway, you're going to level up these uh, as you get them. So it's not a part of the most important build here, so I won't include it here, but make sure you do level these up. So after getting all the essential skills for your Succession Striker, you spend around 1,262 skill points if you picked everything that I showed. But of course, you want to get your auras, you want to get some of your luxury skills like your grabs. So I'd say around 1,300 to 1,400, you can start grinding with Succession Striker quite comfortably. Now, there's something you got to remember about the skills between Absolute and Prime. Prime are much stronger, but the CC is usually more limited. For example, here with Wolf's Hunger. This is not something I use very often because it does put me out in the open, but the Absolute version has stun on good hits, whereas the Prime version only has one stun. So, naturally, if you're doing PvP, you'd want to get the Absolute version. Same thing for Rage Hammer. However, the thing about Rage Hammer is the Absolute version doesn't flow with uh, Knee Hammer to do this uh, cool effect, so I usually don't change that out. But anyway, this is a PvE video, but I wanted to just point that out. Same thing will go for uh, Crimson Fang. For example, if you look at the uh, stun effect, the Absolute version has stiffness, whereas Crimson Fang's uh, Prime version, while it does a lot more damage, it does not have stiffness. So there is an option there to switch that over as well, so just keep that in mind. Some of these skills do have that, and that's the case for a lot of the skills in a lot of the classes. Anyway, let's move on to the actual rotation now that you guys know what the important skills are. And this is a class which doesn't need too many skill points to be competent in grinding, so it's a really good thing about it. And it's a simple class overall, and I do appreciate that fact about it. So a lot of you guys will be able to get started as soon as you're at that skill point level. So let's get started with the rotation and we can go over that. I almost forgot for skill enhancements, you wanna take flow, uh, backstep, and explosive jolt. The level 57 ones aren't really that important. I pick perfect blow. Once you have enough uh, skill points, you can unlock it. But for the most part, it's uh, pretty mediocre. I don't use it that often. Anyway, let's get these two and we can move on to the rotation. All right, for the rotation, I'm going to enable the key inputs here. There are multiple ways to pull mobs, so the most common way is going to be using spacebar, or you can use uh, Nimbus Strike if you uh, unlock it on your skill build like that, or you can um, Knee Hammer into Rage Hammer, or Nimbus Strike into, or Twisted Collision into Skull Crusher, Nimbus Strike into Skull Crusher. Many ways you can do it. It depends on the rotation and the orientation of the mobs and how you're going to group them up. So to start off with the PvE damage rotation, my most common thing to do is after I have the mobs grouped up is to use Explosive Jolt into Roaring Tiger. Now, let me put that on my hotbar. There we go. So. Explosive Jolt, Roaring Tiger into Wolf's Fang. That will proc my main add-ons. Now, I don't have the add-ons enabled right now because I'm just showing you guys the rotation, but that's fine. That's gonna be the main opener. Usually takes out a lot of HP from the mobs uh, if you get a back attack in, and it's a really good way to start off. And then the next follow-up is really simple. You just do Crimson Fang Tree, which is the Crimson Fang skill plus the follow-ups, then the adamantine tree, which is the adamantine skills and the follow-ups. Now, in between, if you like, you can use backflow to get behind the target and just continue with your rotation, but with back damage, which does a lot more. But let's see the whole rotation in its entirety. So, explosive jolt, roaring tiger, wolf's fang. 
Prinzum Fang, follow up skills, Adamantine. And once if the mobs aren't dead by then, you can continue with Crimson Fang after that. So let's see the full rotation in a continuous manner. Explosive Jolt, Roaring Tiger, Wolf's Fang, Crimson Fang, Adamantine, Crimson Fang again, Roaring Tiger, Wolf's Fang, Adamantine, and you can just endlessly keep going like that. So what I like to do is generally get the back attacks in the beginning because by then the mobs are already at half health or almost dead by just Crimson Fang, Roaring Tiger, and Wolf's Fang. And then I'll do the Crimson Fang and sorry that was Explosive Jolt, Roaring Tiger, Wolf's Fang. And then I'll do the Crimson Fang and if the mobs are still at a decent amount of HP I'll backflow to get behind them and then do the Adamantine. So that does a little bit more damage than um, just hitting him straight up. Actually, it does a lot more damage, but there is a factor of the time it takes to get behind the target. And sometimes if the mobs are already going to die, it's not really necessary to get behind them. But this is basically the rotation. Once again, it's Explosive Jolt into Roaring Tiger, Wolf's Fang. Then Crimson Fang, Adamantine. That's really it, and it's really simple, and I use it pretty much everywhere. The only difference is how you pull the mobs, and how you orient yourself, and how you get the back hits and the back attacks and such. Now, just remember, when you're pulling the mobs, you want to be as efficient as possible and as quick as possible, whether you just uh, dash and spacebar, or you're going to Nimbus Strike in, pull everything, and get out of there and pull the next pack. You just have to get used to playing Striker and you'll get a feel for it and that's the only variable that's going to be there and if you're going to interrupt your rotation just to get behind the target to do more damage. So overall Striker's damage rotation is very simple and it does a ton of damage. So let me switch back to my build along with all my add-ons and everything and we can actually go and do a little bit of grinding and I can actually show you how I grind in Sakraya. So let me just heal up and I'll see you guys there. Before we get started with the Sakraya grind, I want to show you guys the different ways you can cancel Wolf's Fang. Now in my rotation I showed you, we're using Roaring Tiger into Wolf's Fang. That is an easy way to do it. Another way is just using Adamantine into Wolf's Fang because Adamantine doesn't go on cooldown, only the follow-up skills go on cooldown. Or you can use um, Somersault Kick and do it like that. That's also a good one you can do because Somersault does an instant DP debuff. While it's not as good as the one from Deathstrike, it's still an instant debuff and it has potential for CC. It has a float on it. So it is a good option as well. Once again, to recap, you can use Roaring Tiger into Wolf's Fang. You can use Adamantine into Wolf's Fang. You can use Somersault into Wolf's Fang. So there's multiple ways you can do it. There are other ways you can uh, cancel into it, but those are my three go-to ones and usually I just do it off uh, Roaring Tiger just because it's so good with it. You get the add-ons from Roaring Tiger along with the 30 monster AP and then you just go into Crimson Fang or Adamantine and do a ton of damage. All right, now to show you guys the DPS rotation in action. So let's just start pulling here. Let me actually call out my pets here. All right, so the mobs are grouped up. So I use my space bar to get them all in a pack then Explosive Jolt, Roaring Tiger, Wolf's Fang, Crimson Fang, and then Adamantine to finish them off. That's pretty much it. It's a very simple rotation and it's very effective. You can use it in pretty much any situation. The only difference is getting behind the mobs in between, like I'll show you here. Explosive Jolt, Roaring Tiger, Wolf's Fang, Crimson Fang, and then go behind him, Adamantine for the back attack, just to do a lot more damage. So, these are all different variations that I showed you today um, with how to proc your, for example, your Wolf's Fang off, let's say Somersault. I can do that right here. So, Wolf's Fang from the Somersault, then into Crimson Fang, then Adamantine. You can switch it around. For example, here, I'll do Somersault into Wolf's Fang, right into Adamantine. So, and then I can go to Crimson Fang. However, it is much better to do Crimson Fang first, but just play around with it, see how you like it. It's all about the feel for the most part. After you get that basic rotation down, how you pull the mobs, how you uh, get around from pack to pack, it's really up to you. There are ways to do it more efficiently depending on where you are and how far the mobs are apart and whatnot, but 
Anyway, that's pretty much it. It's a very straightforward rotation and it's very effective. This is one of the reasons why Striker is such a powerful grinder because it's so easy to do as rotation once you have it down in muscle memory, you're pretty much good to go. And each hit just hits so freaking hard. And he has great add-ons and debuffs to accompany it. Like look at my buff bar right now. Like look at all of these buffs. Striker is just such a well synergized class that everything just goes well together. Especially if you use the add-ons that I show you on screen earlier in the video, you should be golden. All right, guys, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you found it helpful. Please do like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the bell icon and check me out at twitch.tv slash impansy. If you have any questions, drop them in the comment section down below. Hit me up on Discord or check me out on my live stream. I can definitely try to help you out there. Anyway, take it easy and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.